Hello there, Cancers. Welcome to your tarot reading. I'm going to relay some messages for you, and then we're going to go um, and, you know, lay the spread out for this month's reading, and then we'll go into that. First of all, I feel like some of you are caught between a rock and a hard place. You're in a, a catch-22 type of a situation, especially for those of you who are in charge of... Um, training other people or in charge of like uh, writing you know performance reveals uh, about other people or even some of you might be in a position where you uh, have other people that you're mentoring so first of all you feel like there is a need there's somebody in your environment who's kind of underperforming right and um, you're not sure how to go about reprimanding them and you're not really sure how to approach the situation because I feel like there is something bigger at stake here. First of all, you and, uh, and um, Pisces and Capricorns, you guys are really, really understanding and very uh, sympathetic when it comes to people's shortcomings. You have this innate understanding that not everyone is going to be on the same page. Not everyone understands processes, information, you know, in the same manner. Some people are faster, some people are slower. Some people learn really fast and they forget, while others learn really, really slowly, but once they learn something, they retain it, you know, to the end of time. So I feel like you're very understanding of human shortcomings. You're very understanding and you're very patient when you have to train, when you have to teach, when you have to um, walk somebody through a process or through a situation. So I feel like you have some people under you that are just not getting it. They're underperforming. They're not doing uh, things the way that they should. And I feel like it's a cognitive thing. It's not like they're purposely, you know, slacking off because you're not sympathetic about that, but I feel like they're struggling. And so on the one hand, you make a lot of allowances for them. But on the other hand, people above you are, are kind of giving you pressure. They're just like, okay, how is Bob or Joe or Anne, uh, how are, how is their progress? Can we give them the boot? How long would it take for, for them to get it? And I feel like, on the one hand, you're understanding you're in, and you're sympathetic as to why the other person is struggling. But on the other hand, if you give them too much leeway and too many allowances, you might be seen as uh, somebody who's too soft to be in the managerial supervisory advisory position. You might be seen as someone who is might not be appropriate for the role that you are currently in. So I feel like you're in a um, catch-22. Like, what do you, what do I do um, to to prove to my, you know, higher ups that I'm capable of doing this decision? But at the same time, what can I do so I don't throw other people under the bus? Because I feel like you're grappling with this. I feel like ethical dilemma. It also affects you, but at the same time, you're sympathetic to the other person. So. Um, I, I feel that you want to, you know, really take the time to sort this out because they're mentioning in an organization, in a, a, a chain of command, one weak link can also sabotage, you know, that entire um, process that other people are working to build up. One weak link can cause the downfall of that, okay? So making a decision from a space where we look at all the pieces of the puzzle and we try to eliminate the weak link I feel like that's gonna be crucial if you are in a managerial supervisory position okay so being con conscientious about the fact that uh, not to be cold-hearted but you know to be conscientious of the fact that you are entrusted with certain responsibilities and I feel like you might need to make rough decisions or tough decisions I feel like, you know, Cancers, you are a sign that is very likable and you are, um, you know, like I was talking to a client today and uh, she mentioned like I am a crab that have withdrawn into my shell. And I feel like that's what it is. Um, deep down, you know, like you have that hard exterior where you are very capable and ambitious and uh, you know how to do the right things. But I feel like uh, without that shell, you have a very soft exterior. You're very compassionate. Um, you want to be well-liked and you work really well with people.
and you work really well alongside people in a more egalitarian setting so maybe you might want to rethink too is you know supervisory management um, positions are those appropriate for me because I feel like you're best working in the alongside other people rather than leading them okay so that's what I'm just sensing and I feel like it can go both ways for you guys but I feel like maybe that might be helpful in allowing you to make that, that decision that you need to make um, what I'm also feeling is they're saying good health diagnoses coming through and good health being restored and this can be relate to you if you are waiting on some type of a medical you know prognosis I feel like you're gonna be able to get good results if these things are like uh, blood pressure blood sugar cholesterol levels related I feel like you're getting very good outcomes okay and then I also feel a lot of you are um, family members are going to be figuring very prominently they might call upon you for assistance and they might also there there might be like um, within the family family squabbles family disputes substance abuse issues where you might need to family members need to come together and stage some type of a an intervention so for example if we have like um, um, a child in the family that is underperforming or that is engaging in unhealthy behaviors I feel like everyone in the family unit is calling upon each other to stage some type of an intervention to prevent things from getting out of control and then I also feel for many of you um, there are squabbles situations within the home as it relates to parents and you might be called upon as a mediator so I feel many of you are going to be making trips back and forth to check on family members you might be making trips back and forth to check on loved ones to make sure they're okay and to make sure that you know you're you're there to mediate um, some type of you're, you're there to mediate or to provide some type of a dispute resolution conflict resolution okay um, I feel like the family situation they need assistance of your time your energy and or even your financial resources okay so I, I do feel that family um, dynamics are figuring heavily into this month um, I also feel as if some of you are making plans travel plans travel plans is highly indicated here with the eight of uh, wands but I feel like you're making travel plans with other people and um, there might be a time crunch where it might not happen okay it's um the month of August and going into the first two weeks of September we do have Mercury in retrograde and it can complicate uh, complicate travel plans it can create travel delays it can create uh, a slowdown blockages and just you know uh, things going haywire so I feel like travel delays it's best um, to you know just avoid traveling especially towards the end of this month so I feel like there some of you are making plans with a significant other or with like a friend or even making plans to go back home to visit family and I feel that there might be some um, situation surrounding that 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 can complicate your travel arrangements okay um, making sure you have your itinerary making sure that you have everything planned out and just try to you know plan for have a contingency plan in, in case things fall through okay um, they I know this is strange because I, I feel like this is not normally your energy but the the third message that I have here is they mentioned to be very very open-minded with people from different walks of life if you are heavily in an environment where you're dealing with a lot of foreigners if you're dealing with people who are culturally ethnically linguistically very different from you and they might be I, I'm, I'm sensing you know in in Western society we tend to be a little bit more on the individualistic end of the spectrum where every man is for himself and we once we create something we need to um, fix it ourselves. and I feel like you're dealing with somebody from a culture that is more collective you're dealing with a culture where it's like there there is that that lack of boundaries you know uh, what's what's yours is mine so they're they're taking your things or they're asking you to do things that might not be appropriate and I feel like it's a breach of your own sense of individuality and I feel like if you're dealing with this be very very patient understand where they're coming from and understand that maybe you know 
maybe that's not too bad. Maybe we're raised in a, a certain way and we think that's the only way to function in society. But when we come up across people who are different from us, who think more in collective terms, I feel like there's some value to that. But at the same time, um, you want to make sure whether or not that's appropriate for you. So I feel like some some issues as it relates to dealing with foreigners, some issues as it relates to like cross-cultural miscommunication, cross-cultural misrepresentation or even misunderstandings that's going to be coming heavily into the picture and especially if you're in a relationship as well where um you are ethnically culturally linguistically different okay so, um, i feel like some issues will come through as it relates to what's mine and what's yours what's appropriate and and what's not um so those are like social expectations are going to be heavily discussed about and I feel like it might seep into the relationship if you are dealing with people who are very different from you ethnically. Um, I feel like the last message here, I'm going to um, relay that very quickly and then we'll go into your reading. So the last message that comes into the picture here is um, I'm sensing for a lot of you throughout your early you know, adult life, so like 20s and 30s and, and 40s, um, you were very, very excited about making money. So this might mean foregoing education in order to get out into the world, in order to get your hands dirty, in order for you to just start making money as soon as you can. And I feel for many of you, uh, you work really, really hard, you know, just to, to make money. And I also feel for others of you, 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 you were able to um, take on jobs even overseas, far away from family, far away from what all of the people in your age group were doing, you wanted new, you wanted, um, if you didn't have financial concerns were, uh, co growing up, you wanted to do something different, something exciting, something very, very unique. You wanted to like, kind of like stand out, okay? I feel like a lot of security issues are coming through regarding money. And I feel like many of you are just like, I don't really want a job, uh, an exciting job anymore. I don't want to travel so much. I don't want to, you know, like uh, like a job that um, that is exciting, that is that requires so that that um, embodies so much uncertainty. I just want a lot more security. I want a career, and I want a job that will give me fat pension, retirement, stability and even healthcare. So I feel like your assessment of what is an appropriate job for you, I feel like you're making some major changes and you're trying to really figure out what type of career path you need to get yourself into so that you can have the stability that you need, okay? So <clears throat> let me just um, go into your reading for this month. One of the first things that came out here, and you know, we have the tower card, and we have, first of all, let me talk about this. This is self-employment. This is a job where you are either in the creative industry, you're making your money work for you, or you are coming into a place of financial abundance. You have been consistently working really hard and the money starts to rack up, right? Like the money is starting to roll in. So I feel like at this point, financially, some of you are in a good space and some of you are progressing and some of you are even thinking about a lot of investment opportunities. If you are branching off and doing investment uh, for this month, I would advise you to play it safe, okay? Don't expand too fast. There is a lot of um, financial uncertainty right now. There's a lot of fluctuations in the financial markets. So they're saying, you know, don't, um, they're, they're like, don't, don't, don't eat all your candy at once. So I feel like it's, um, it's indicative of diversifying your portfolio. It's also conducive to you looking at other opportunities, safe choices, rather than plunging right in because I feel like there's some contraction here and you might be at a loss, major loss when it comes to big risky 
investment endeavors okay so being a little bit more conservative when it comes to investment opportunities that is going to be very crucial for you and if you are investing if you're like a, a financier and you're lending out money to people making sure that they have a good track history under their belt making sure they are reputable and making sure that you know they they are where they say they are because i feel like making sure that the other person is legitimate is one of the safest way that you can safeguard your money so it's sort of like you going back to what i mentioned before you are very very sympathetic and you want people to succeed you really care that people are given the right opportunities so that they can thrive but i do feel there are situations here that you need to be very careful about as it relates to um sending out a loan making a loan to somebody or especially giving money uh, to financial institutions you want to be very careful to be able to safeguard your money to avoid like a massive loss okay so being a little bit uh, uh erring on the more conservative side i feel it is going to be very crucial for you all right um the second thing that came into the picture here we have here the sun and the ace of wands the Ace of Wands basically indicates new projects, new endeavors, things that are very, very exciting, things that are just, you know, like uh, they're exhilarating, such as thrill-seeking activity, such as new uh, um, creative endeavors as well. If you have somebody that is bringing you new things, and especially if they're saying this is, you know, something that you can really blow up, we can really make a lot of money. We can get a lot of fame, get a lot of notoriety, get a lot of visibility. I feel that you might need to be careful as well because this is kind of like the boy who cried wolf. They hype up a big theory. They hype up a big game plan. But when it comes to foundationally, do they have a solid viable business model? Do they have a solid viable proposal? Do they have substance to back up what they claim? I feel like they're lacking in substance. So I feel like something that was hyped up is going to come crumbling down. And it's really important for you to keep your wits about you and be very discerning when you are interacting with people for this month, okay? Don't get duped. Don't uh, let them, you know, poke at that soft heart of yours because I feel like that's how they get you. And they might not have the best intentions. And I feel like they're a little bit reckless because it is your money that they're toying around with, not theirs. And that's why they're just... Um, a little bit reckless irresponsible and they're not doing the preliminary market research and spinning you this um this pipe dream and in fact it's not built on a, a stable foundation so i want you to be very careful about where you are giving your money to whom you are giving your money and to where you are investing your money okay so be careful about that all right this is a really good place to be. And I feel like, you know, in, in terms of financial abundance, this is a very great place because you're, you're not working very hard. You have a lot of leisure time. And so you want to maintain the status quo. You want to err on the safe side and you want to, you know, minimize the amount of risk. Okay. Um, moving forward, what I have as well is, um, I, I feel like this big, big, big travel opportunity that is beckoning you, calling you. And I feel like for some of you, um, you might be called in overtime at work. There might even be, if, for example, you are working on a commission on a client base basis, you are um, getting some solicitation for travel, for leisure activities, to do sightseeing, to travel, to see another person. And uh, especially if you are dealing here with a, um, a, a fire sign. So this is a Sagittarius, an Aries or a Leo, sun, moon or rising they're telling you come to see me come travel this way and you're kind of on the fence about do i really want to go to see that person do i want to get emotionally more wrapped up in the other person if you were to travel i feel like you're gonna be um dealing with it at a financial cost to you and I feel like you need to keep yourself available because of work projects, because of things coming through. So if you're taking the time off to make this travel arrangement or to, you know, really travel, I feel like you're going to have to forego, like you're going to have to turn down some projects because you're not physically available to undertake these projects. And at the same time, if you're looking for work, if you're looking for solid employment, 
try to stay put, try not to travel because news are coming through very unexpectedly and you need to be present physically in order to follow up with a firm, to follow up with an organization, to be able to get new jobs and to land new uh, projects. Okay. So I hope that makes sense. Um, what I mentioned earlier as well is um, I do feel some issues within the home, either, you know, somebody dealing with uh, health issues or especially substance abuse. This is a card about somebody who is um, a little bit more like playing the victim, someone who's dealing with a lot of sadness, a lot of grief, but I feel like they're not really cognizant of the fact that they have created a series of, um, they, they have chosen a series of bad life decisions and i feel like it's gotten them to a place where um they're kind of like woe is me okay so i feel like there is a need for you to travel as well to take care of situations within the household things that are kind of rocky they're gonna crumble down so that means the the home family foundation especially if the, you need to stage intervention for young children here with the page, somebody who's go, uh, gone off the deep end, somebody who's lost their sense of direction, who has lost their moral compass, or who is in a space where they feel very stuck and they don't know how to get themselves out of their predicament. So I feel like there is going to be some family demands coming, um, kind of like falling upon you. And you're going to need to keep yourself physically and emotionally in top shape in order to deal with this. So that means traveling plans that have been made. I feel like they might need to be um, revisited or they might need to be like changed at the last minute. Okay. Um, cancers, I'm also feeling for many of you as well. There are a lot of creative uh, ventures that are coming through for you. And this is more like on the creative end, which is, um, so for example, if you're working in a creative field, if you, you know, for example, do things with your hands, build things, create things like an artist, a singer, a photographer, a model, um, if it's a creative endeavor, I, I feel like some creative endeavors will allow you to rub shoulders with some really important people. And I feel like you're going to be traveling to do these creative endeavors. You're also going to be as well expanding, you know, outwards, dealing with a lot of people from different walks of life, different parts of the world, dealing with people who might be outside of your, you know, cultural, linguistic, national background. So I feel like there's a lot of opportunities for expansion, right? So be very clear to keep yourself, you know, keep expectations very fluid for this month. Don't say, oh, I'm not going to do that. It doesn't look like it's going to pan out for me. I feel like you should grab opportunities. And at the same time, if you're dealing with different three people who are very, very different from you, be very open-minded, okay? Be able to navigate that social environment because I feel like projects come through, come into the picture, excuse me. And then I feel like it's good. It's really going to enhance your visibility here. It's going to give you a lot of success, but when it shows up in the reverse position, success is theirs, but you need to grab these opportunities. You need to be on the grabbing end. You need to be on the proactive end to make it work for you because they're falling into place but it is still up to you to push this energy forward. Okay. So how you interact with other people is going to be very, very crucial. They want somebody who is very confident. They want somebody who is very worldly and cultured and they don't want somebody who's wishy-washy. They don't want somebody who's like having difficulties, um, making decisions. So I feel like, you know, air on the side of, um, err on the side of like uh, showing your competence, showing that you're not um, wishy-washy, showing them the fact that you know what you're doing. Okay. So I feel like, you know, the, going back to the first message that I mentioned, I feel as if um, you want to be very likable. You want to be, you know, you, you want to go with the crowd, but I do sense that your sense of individuality is going to be very important for you to make traction in the world and for you to land new projects. Okay. And for you to be in a very competitive environment where you're going to stand out in some way. Um, let me see here. The last message I'm getting here is, um, I feel like this is a relationship here. 
you have a relationship I feel with this person this is a um, Sagittarius an Aries or a Leo and um, I'm, I'm sensing you know the um, the energy of this person there's gonna be some news coming through from this person that might really upset your plans and I feel like it's very unintended okay and I feel like this is somebody that generally they care about you. They they wear their hearts on their sleeves. They're generally very very loving, supportive, affectionate, and truthful. But I feel like there there are some issues when it comes to communication between you and this person. And there is a sense of like whether or not the relationship is fair, whether or not you see long term potential for this relationship. If you do not see long term potential for this relationship. It's it might be in your best interest to cut your losses now because it feels like a lot of things are coming through They might demand to, to come see you. You might want to come see them and then things just kind of unravel at the last minute and I feel like there is a, a sense here of a relationship that's on its way out Okay, like a relate they mentioned a relationship on its way out so you want to be very careful about this I'm gonna do your love relationship reading in just a little bit but um, I feel like reassessing the demands that your relationship partners are placing upon you, whether or not that is fair, whether or not they are giving their fair share of the contribution in the relationship, that's very crucial, okay? So let's go into your love relationship reading and see what's in store for you. I'm hoping to be able to flush out that energy. So let's see, love relationship. For cancers for the month of August 2017 so cancers love romance relationship August 2017 I'm going to pull out another card for this cluster here. Okay, so let me talk about your reading here. So the foundation is something that you're coming into the month of... Um, you're coming into the the month of August with the knowledge of okay this is something that has already happened you're dealing with it right now and you're coping with it first of all we have the Hierophant and the Hierophant is a foundation for a very very good relationship this is stability this is like living with another person getting married to another first person creating a home creating a family creating an environment where two people can work together and you know um, take the relationship to the next level I feel like some of you have been in this situation where you try to keep the family unit intact, where you have lived with another person, there might have been promises for marriage, there might be, you know, you're, you're like buying property, you're trying your best to keep the situation stable. However, I feel here it's linked up with the Five of Cups. And the Five of Cups, it's like no matter what you did, 
the energy was very volatile between you and the other person. You might not have the same sense of what it means to have a family. You might not have the same direction when it comes to like, where do we want to take our relationship? There might have been some recent falling out between you and a significant relationship partner. And no matter how hard you try to keep the family unit intact, I feel that it is um, kind of like drifting away. The other party might have tried to move on. You yourself are trying to move on. And I feel like you're dealing with regrets like, I should have done this, I should have done more, I should have stuck around. So I feel like we're dealing with some regrets here as it relates to a uh, recent significant relationship that you've been in. Significant relationships usually, you know, last for like five years or more, okay? And significant relationships are relationships where you actually like um i feel like you you have somebody that was very very stable you have somebody that you had plans to either move in together get married or buy property together or you might have even been married with them but um i feel like there might have been a separation recently a divorce a moving out and i feel like you're still yearning for that stability and i feel like there is some regrets here i should have done more is what i'm hearing so i feel some of you are dealing with uh regrets based on how a past relationship ended what's in the past this is the recent past we have a lot a lot a lot of conflict some of you might have dealt with an air sign we have here the five of wands and um, this is a situation where philosophically you can not agree with another person philosophically it doesn't mean like you know you can't agree on how to save money it doesn't mean that i feel like philosophically the other person feels this is right and this is wrong and you feel like that's not the case so i feel like on some intellectual on some philosophical level you can't see eye to eye and it feels like one person is um behaving in a way where they they they're emotionally unavailable or at least they feel like they they it, it seems to me like one person feels verbally or or emotionally attacked by the other person and it feels as well one person feels as if the other person is not emotionally available um, I'm looking at the two swords one person has all these necklaces and gems and jewelry hanging on their swords you were dealing with somebody where philosophically you feel like they were too um, and I hate saying this but it, it did come out um, you feel like they're too materialistic they're too money grubbing they're too they're so caught up in making money that they neglected the relationship they neglected the home they neglected their responsibilities as your relationship partner and so there were a lot of you know you you love each other they're they, they're they don't seem like a bad person but the way that you both are approaching this issue the way that you both view money i feel like it was a major source of contention in the relationship and then for others of you, you might have been dealing with a fire sign, a Sagittarius, an Aries, or a Leo. And I feel like this fire sign might have accused you of stepping out on the relationship. The fire sign might have her or his own trust issues where they're kind of um, bringing their trust issues onto the, the, the relationship with you. And they're looking at you through the lens of whatever hurts they've been dealing with the past. And so I feel like the, the interaction between the two of you, it's very exciting. It's very dynamic. It's really, you know, it, it's very, um, they, <laughs> I'm hearing like chemically inducing. So you might have had a lot of fun together. You might have experimented with a lot of, you know, recreational um, things like drugs, alcohol. Like it, it was very, very fun. It was very experimental. Some of you are still dealing with this person, but I do feel overall that it's a relationship that is exciting, but it seems like one person plays the victim or one person is constantly attacking the other person. There are trust issues here for sure, okay? Um, moving forward into the present environment, what we have is the magician, and we have as well the ace of wands. So let me talk about this. The ace of wands is kind of like new energy this is like a new spark of passion being introduced in a relationship or a new person coming into the picture 
And the Ace of Wands is a very, you know, like, uh, it's a very physically attractive type of a relationship where you are uh, attracted to each other. There's a, a very strong sense of passion, chemistry, and things like that. And the person that you're dealing with here, the Magician, the Magician is somebody that is, um, you know, they, they look really nice. They're very, they're very well dressed. They're very well groomed. And I feel like they're dressed to a T, you know, like they're, they're dressed to impress. This is somebody with quite a bit of, uh, like they, they say, expensive taste. They might or might not have a lot of money, but they, they have expensive taste. They like to be wine and dine. They like to rub shoulders with the rich and famous. They might have a career in the public limelight. They might be a politician. They might be, um, you know, like an entertainer. And so I feel like you have somebody coming into the picture that you are very, very interested in. And they're very dynamic. They're very attractive, very exciting, very intelligent as well. And I feel that you have, you're carrying a torch. Some of you are carrying a torch for this new person. If you are in a relationship and your partner has trust issues, I feel like just to appease your partner, you want to be very, very clear to steer clear of this person because this person knows how to seduce, okay? Um, so that's what I'm feeling here. Some of you are in one relationship and you are attracted to another person. And I'm also feeling some of you left relationships and you have a new person coming into the picture. It feels like it can be very exciting, but it doesn't feel to me like it's going to lead to a stable relationship because the nature of this is it's very... It's very like um, chemically inducing. It's very passionate. It's very exciting. But it is going to burn out. It is going to fizzle out. And over time, the passion and the excitement without that emotional rapport, I don't feel that you're going to settle for a relationship like that. Okay. So you have opportunities for new attractions, short term relationships, short flings, one night stands. But when it comes overall to long term relationship prospects, I just don't feel that this is the right person for you. Crowning this reading is something that you are thinking about. We have here the five of pentacles and the five of pentacles, um, three, no, two, two other signs have gotten this card. This is a card where we are emerging from a really dark period in our life and we're trying to get back into the dating world. This is a card about overcoming a lot of difficult challenges financially, emotionally, um, even like self -esteem, overcoming self-esteem issue, overcoming our sense of uh, lack of confidence in order to venture out and step into the light. And I also feel for many of you, there might have been a lot of uh, financial issues affecting your ability to date, okay? So you might have been kind of like working very tirelessly to build up your empire, working very tirelessly to get away from this space of financial lack, to create a foundation for yourself and to create a better future for yourself. So your interest was not on dating. It was more on serious, tangible things. And in the process, if you are that person, in the process, you're going to encounter somebody who is very, very, they, they seemingly have it made. They seem very financially stable, very financially well off. They might um, make a living as a salesperson. They might do make a living as, um, they might make a living as like um, somebody who is, who uses communication to make a living. A teacher, a salesman or a salesperson, a saleswoman. Um, a radio personality, a writer, somebody quite famous, okay, somebody who's quite well known, who's very confident. And I feel like just by the, just by proxy of interacting with this person, if you're coming from this space of lack and you encounter somebody like this, you're going to feel very inspired. You're going to feel very, very like uh, on top of the world. And I do feel you are carrying a torch for this person, okay? So, Moving into the future, we have here the Queen of Cups, the Queen of Swords, and the Seven of Swords. Um, for ladies, or actually people who are dating, um, so Cancerian people, if you're watching this and you're dating men, you have somebody that's really dynamic, okay? This is not a long-term relationship partner. This is somebody that, yes, 
he is exciting, but I feel like he can be deceiving and he can have a lot of uh, groupies, a lot of other people uh, pining after him, vying for his attention. It's not going to lead to a, a relationship because I, I feel like there could be other women in the picture, other people in the picture that he is feeding the same romantic story to, okay? And I feel like Cancerian people who are dating women, you have two women prospects here. And this is a, a really, really good prospect. So the, both of these are actually very good. You have a water sign, so another Cancer, a Pisces, or a Scorpio. And this is somebody that wears their hearts on their sleeves. They are really, really loving, faithful, attractive. And actually, I feel like with um, Cancerian men or women, regardless of who you're dating, I feel like you have two options here. So one is a water sign, very loving, very um, very nurturing. And I feel like the, the communication, the emotional rapport between the two of you will flow really well. And we have the Queen of Swords, which is an air sign, an Aquarius, a Gemini or a Libra, Sun, Moon or Rising. And I feel if you are dealing with both of these um, options, you're going to have to make a choice between, you know, one of them. Um, I'm also feeling there is, you know, try to make a choice really soon rather than being caught in this situation. This is a, a card about deception. So you don't want to be caught in this situation where you are juggling two people. I don't feel that you're that tight, but I just feel like if the decision is drawn out, if you enjoy both of their companies and uh, you don't make a decision soon, it can be construed as buying time or it can be construed as being deceitful or, you know, trying to get away with dating the both of them. Um, they might know about each other. So just be very careful. I feel for ladies though, be careful about, you know, being enthralled by some, somebody that's very flashy, but that has like other options on the table. Okay. Um, singles people, I feel like you're so busy. Love is really not on your agenda. And I feel like if love is not really on your agenda, you're going to encounter people that you are professionally linked up with. And, and honestly, I feel like there is a very strong person here, very dynamic, a little bit of a player. I don't, I don't trust that, that magician energy. This is somebody who talks big, but, but lacks the substance. They can be very attractive, very intelligent, but I feel like it's just, um, it's a little bit problematic. Okay. But we have here a very strong, um, I feel like a, a strong fire sign that you might've left behind for many of you. And then we have two other options, which is a big air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra coming through and also a water sign that can be a little bit more emotionally appropriate for you. Okay. Um, cancers, I wish you all the best. And, um, you know, take it easy this month, okay? Don't wear yourself out. Don't try to accommodate so many other people that you don't take time off for yourself, okay? Um, I'm going to be, be back for the mid-month reading to flush some of these energies out. I hope the reading has been helpful, and I'll talk to you guys soon. If you'd like to book a private reading with me, the information is in the description box below, and uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.